Hello everyone, my name is Jordan Moore and today I'm going to be doing a presentation on optical fibers for telecommunication. To start off, optical fibers have been described as the backbone of modern communications infrastructure and is one of the reasons we are also connected today. In this video, I'm going to dive into the physics of optical fibers and what makes them so useful. Now, let's get into how an optical fiber works. In chapter 8 of our textbook, Fundamentals of Applied Electromagnetics, we know that when light enters a medium, it causes it to refract. This is why the straw in your water appears to be misaligned, when in reality the light is traveling to your eye at a slightly different angle than before. A refraction index can be calculated with the formula N equals the speed of light divided by the phase velocity in the medium. But how does this relate to optical fibers? Well, if an angle is refracted enough, it will no longer enter the other medium, but instead create a 90 degree angle parallel to both mediums, called the critical angle. The critical angle of two mediums can be found by the formula sine of the critical angle equals the index of refraction for the second medium divided by the index of refraction for the first medium. Lastly, if the angle of incidence, which is the value of the initial angle into the other medium, exceeds the critical angle, the light wave gets totally internally reflected. This means that the angle of light is refracted so much that it actually turns into a reflection and this is how we use optical fibers for telecommunication. Another concept we need to know is Snell's Law found in chapter 8 of our textbook. Snell's Law of Reflection states that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. And Snell's Law of Refraction provides a relationship between transmitted angle and incident angle in terms of the ratio and phase velocities. The formula for Snell's Law is the incident angle equals the reflected angle. And also, the sine of the transmitted angle divided by the sine of the incident angle equals the phase velocity of the medium 2 divided by the phase velocity of medium 1. Replacing phase velocities with one of the equations we've gone over gives us sine of the transmitted angle over sine of the incident angle equals the index of refraction of medium 1 divided by the index of refraction of medium 2. We can then manipulate this formula to help us find the critical angle which we previously talked about. So now let's talk about what the optical fiber is actually made of. The optical fiber is made up of a cylindrical fiber core with the index of refraction NF, surrounded by a lower index of refraction NC called cladding. When a bunch of these fibers are packed together, the cladding serves to isolate the fiber as to avoid leakage of light into other fibers. It also matters at what angle the light enters the fiber. By manipulating the equation sine of the critical angle equals NC over NF, we can find the acceptance angle into the fiber, which is the maximum value for the incident angle that will still be reflected internally. The equation sine of the acceptance angle equals 1 over n naught times nf squared minus nc squared to the 1 half or square rooted, where n naught is the index of refraction of the medium surrounding the fiber, usually air or water, as in the case of the transatlantic telephone cable. After the light enters the fiber, it keeps being internally reflected until it reaches its end. The only loss of power in an optical fiber is at the sending and receiving ends and the absorption of the fiber material. This is why optical fibers are chosen over, over other means of telecommunication, like copper coaxial lines, because its attenuation is a lot less, meaning that it won't degrade as fast and the signal can travel longer distances. So before I go, let's summarize what we've learned. Optical fibers are used to transfer information very fast across a large distance because of its low attenuation. We need to know the angle of acceptance so that we know what angles the light needs to enter at. Otherwise, the fiber is rendered useless because we don't get any total internal reflection. Optical fibers work by internally reflecting a light wave to another point. And lastly, some new information. Modern day uses for optical fibers include onboard use in modern aircraft, sensors for railway vibrations to make railway operations safer, and is still responsible for making things like the internet easy and accessible to most people. Again, my name is Jordan Moore, and this was my presentation on optical fibers. Hey everyone, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you. Uh, hopefully you learned something. And also, funny thing is, as I was about to make this video, uh, the guest 2D commented, make some content. Well, that's what I'm doing, all right? So I also attend college and final season right now and I've had a lot of homework and tests and just stuff to prepare for and it's been very overwhelming. But all your comments have been 
very nice. Sometimes when I'm even stressed, I go back and read them. You guys have been so supportive on the channel so far. And I've only, I only have two videos and well, they're not like the best best, but it, I'm trying to learn how to edit and learn how to shoot because it is something that I really like to do. So I just want to thank everyone for watching this video and continuing to support me. My goal is to hit 100 subs before the end of the year. Whether it happens, that's okay or not. I just want to set goals so that I know if I'm improving or not, you know? And also by setting goals, it keeps me in check for wanting to make better new content. So once again, thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.